Okay, now for question number eight from M1, June 2008, the GCE paper, the uh, legacy paper from June 2008. This is a question about connected particles moving in a straight line. Here we have two particles P and Q of mass 2 kilograms and 3 kilograms respectively are joined by a light and extensible string. Initially, the particles are at rest on a, on a rough horizontal plane. Okay, rough means there's friction involved with the string taut. A constant force F of magnitude 30 newtons is applied to Q. Okay, so this force is 30 newtons. We know that already. In the direction PQ as shown in figure 4. The force is applied for 3 seconds and during this time Q travels a distance of 6 meters. The coefficient of friction between each particle and the plane is mu. Find the acceleration of, of Q. Okay, so now, in the first uh, three seconds, okay, it's traveled a distance of six meters. So let's just put some forces on here. So we know it's a rough plane. So we know there's a tension in the string. There's a tension in the string. There's a frictional force acting at Q. We just uh, put that with the arrow. There's a frictional force acting on Q. Okay, and a frictional force acting on P. We don't know what that frictional force is. Okay. You have the weight of P. You have the weight of Q. You have the reaction force at P. The reaction force at Q. And I think that's all the forces acting here. So this is uh, 2G, and this is also going to be 2G, reaction force. This is 3G, and this will also be 3G. Then you have the frictional force, which I'll call this mu times R. So we know the friction force is equal to F max is mu R. Now, we have reached the maximum frictional force because this thing is moving. So the frictional force has reached its maximum values. So therefore, it's equal to mu R which is mu times 2g. So we can say two mu times 2g, and this will be mu times 3g. That's a frictional force acting. So those are all the forces acting on these particles. So they're asking us to find the acceleration of q. Now normally in a question like that, to find the, fr uh, the, the, um, the acceleration, you would use the resultant force is equal to the mass times acceleration. In this case, the resultant force is not f, it's this F 30 newtons minus the total frictional force. Okay, so you'd have, you'd have your 30 newtons minus, and that's basically 5G times mu. And that would equal to the total mass, which is 5 times acceleration. Now, there's two unknowns here. So we cannot actually use this equation. Many of uh, students will probably start by doing this, but what you'll soon realize is we can't actually use this because we don't know what mu is and we don't know what a is. a is what we have to find. And so what we have to think about uh, a different technique. Uh, what we can do is we can think about what we know um, in the question. Now in the question we've been told a few things. In the question we've been told that um, it's the force is applied for three seconds and it travels a distance of six meters and also initially the particles are at rest so we may be able to use the Suvat equations so if you ever find a situation where you cannot use what you normally would do try to see what other bits of information were given in the question so if we think about what we have from the Suvat values because it's a constant force so it's um, constant acceleration it's traveled for six meters in three seconds Okay, the initial speed was zero. We don't know the final speed and we have to find the acceleration. So we have to have an equation which involves S and U and A and T. And if you think, think about what, what equations do we have that have S and U and A and T? Well, you have S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Okay, you can't use V equals U. You can't use v squared equals u squared plus 2as because we don't know what v is. But we know s and u and t 
and we have to find A. So the only thing that we don't know uh, is A, so we have to find it. So we can find it using this equation. So S is 6, U is 0, so this whole thing will become 0. We'll have a half times A, what we have to find, times T, which is 3, squared. So that's going to give you 12 over 9. So A is going to be 12 over 9, which in its simplest form is going to be 4 over 3. So the acceleration of the particle is 4 over 3 meters per second squared. So that's the answer to part um, A. Okay, now for part B. It says find the value of mu. So find the value of mu. Now, we know that F max equals mu mu r. So therefore, mu is equal to F max over r. Now, if we think about each of these particles separately, we have a problem. Because if I think about P on its own, okay, the force is acting on P, the, 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 the uh, resultant force is T minus 2G times mu. Okay, so that's not going to help me find um, what I need. Okay, because the, I, I need to find what this, this frictional force is. Okay, and I need to find what this is, and that will help me find what mu is. Okay, so what we're going to do is, I'm going to take the, the whole system as one thing, because the problem, if you, if you consider these particles separately, you'll have tension to deal with. If you consider the whole particle as one big particle, which we can do because it's moving in a straight line, then we can think of it as one big particle. So we can so make a little diagram here. Think of it as one big particle. So the weight of the particle is the sum of the weights of the separate parts, so it's going to be 5G. And therefore the reaction force is going to be 5G. The force pulling this way on the whole system is just that F, which is the 30 Newtons. And here we have the frictional force acting okay, on this, this side. Okay, this is the F max, okay, on the, the friction acting on, on the whole system. Okay, so what we can say here is F max, um, well, let's just rearrange this first. We can say that 30 minus F max is equal to MA, which is 5 times A. And we know that A is 4 over 3. So we can say that F max is going to be 30 minus 5 times 4 over 3. That would be the frictional force acting. So F max is going to be, that's 30 minus 20 over 3. Uh, sorry, 30 minus 20 over 3, which is going to be 70 over 3 uh, newtons, because that's 30, oh, that will be 90 over 3 minus 20 over 3. Okay, so that's F max. So as we said, F max is mu r, so mu is F max over r, so mu is going to be, 70 divided by 3, 70 over 3 divided by the reaction force, which is 5G for, for the whole system. So it's divided by 5G. So it's 70 times, 70 over 3 times 1 over 5G. So that's going to be 70 over 15G, which simplifies to, that's going to be divided by 5. So that's 14 over 3G. Okay, so let's round this to 3SF. 2SF or 3SF is acceptable because we're using G. 2SF is probably um, the most sensible thing, but I always advise my students to stick to 3SF because it's acceptable in the exam. And uh, 9.8, that gives you 10 over 21. So we can write it as 10 over 21 and then 0 0.476. Okay, if we write 10 over 21, which is equal to 0 0.476. So mu is equal to 0 0.476 to 3 SF. That's the value of mu. Okay, so we, we, we considered the whole system as it's moving in one straight line, thereby we don't have to worry about the tension inside the system. And we only have the unknown of mu, which we could find. Then it says find the tension in the string. So now we have to consider particles on their own. Now I could either consider particle P 
or I could consider particle Q. Now, I'm going to consider particle P because there are less forces acting on it. You have the tension and you have the friction. Here you have the force and the tension and the friction. Okay? So the, the effects of this force are kind of factored into this tension here. So if I consider P, just consider just this part of the problem on its own, then I have the forces acting on the system. So I'm considering just P. So consider P. It's always good to show what you're doing. So you've got, this is P, you have the tension in the string, which you don't know, you have your frictional force, which is mu r, which I'll just deal with in a minute. You have your, the mass or the weight, which was, for there it's 2, so it's 2g, and the reaction force is also 2g here. Okay, so if we resolve the forces horizontally, okay, uh, we know that, we know the acceleration is 4 over 3. Okay, so we got T minus mu R is equal to the mass times acceleration. So it's 2 times 4 over 3. Okay, so we can say that um, T is equal to 8 over 3 plus, now mu was 10 over 21. Okay, and or in fact, I'll take mu as 14 over 3g, that's probably going to be better, times, and we know that r is 2g. Okay, so the g's will cancel out here, and we're going to have 28 plus 8, which is 36 over 3, so t will be equal to 36 over 3, which is equal to 12 newtons. That's the tension in the string. Okay. Um, what else do we have to find? A, B, C, tension in the string. Okay, next. It says, state how in your calculation you have used information that the string is inextensible. So basically, we can assume that both P and Q will have the same acceleration. Okay, so when it's inextensible, all the particles attached to it will have the same acceleration. Okay, then part E says, when the particles have moved for three seconds, the force F is removed. Find the time between the instant that the force is removed and the instant that Q comes to rest. Okay, so let's go back. We've got P and Q, so the instant that the force is removed and that Q comes to rest. Okay, so now let's think about this one for a second. So it's acted for three seconds. So if we think about it, we need to find the speed of Q at the point at which the particles come to rest, uh, at the point at which the force is removed. Okay, so it starts off with um, at in, this starts off at rest. So let's start with this suvat again. Okay, we know that it's gone for six meters. We know the initial speed was zero. We know that we have to we have to find the final speed. We know the acceleration is four over three, and we know that it's acted for three seconds. So we have all this information, which we can use to find the the, the speed at the time when the force is removed. Once we found that, then we can continue. So let's find that first. So when the force is removed, um, we could use here V equals U plus AT. I guess that's probably the easiest one. So V equals U plus AT. So we can say V is equal to U, which is 0, plus A times T, which is 4 over 3 times 3, which is 4 meters per second. So that's the speed after 3 seconds. So after 3 seconds, there's a new situation. After three seconds, acceleration changes. Okay, so let's think about the new acceleration. The new acceleration. In fact, it's going to be a deceleration. Um, so let's consider, let's consider particle Q. All right, so we've got particle Q. Okay, it has 
a weight of 3g newtons so the reaction force is going to be 3g uh, you're going to have this force f is now taken away you have its friction which is mu times r and remember mu was 14 over 3g in its more exact form so basically if we consider if we resolve the forces here you only have one force acting which is acting in this direction so it's going to be um, minus mu r is equal to mass which is 3 times acceleration which is what we have to find okay so r is equal to 3g so it's minus mu times 3g equals 3a so if you look at this a is going to be if you divide both sides the threes will cancel out a is going to be basically minus mu times g so the acceleration is now going to be minus 14 over 3g times g okay so you end up with four, minus 14 over 3 minus 14 over 3 meters per second squared is a new acceleration okay so now we have uh, the new situation let's use a new set of SUVAT values we know a is now negative 14 over 3 it's decelerating of course uh, we know the initial speed at the point when this new uh, situation arose is now 4 meters per second that's the point when the force was removed so that's its initial speed and we need to find when the speed becomes 0 meters per second and they ask us to find the time between the instant the force is removed and the instant that Q comes to rest okay so we need to find the time that's what we need to find we don't want to have to worry about this so this is what we have to find this is when the force was removed it was moving at 4 meters per second and the, it started to decelerate and it now has this deceleration. So we have v, U, V, A, N, T. So again, we could use V equals U plus A, T. And we need to find what A is. So V is 0, U is 4, and you're going to have minus 14 over 3 times T. Okay, so that's your, your A. So you're going to have now... Uh, 14 over 3 t equals 4 so t is equal to 12 that's going to be 12 over 14 which gives you 6 over 7 seconds okay so 6 over 7 seconds so 6 divided by 7 is going to give you 0 0.857 seconds if you want so t equals 0 0.8 Five, seven seconds okay just make sure yep okay so there's your answer to part D I think it was or part E sorry yep so that's the whole of the question answered thank you for watching